there are lots of different techniques proving that sphere has the least surface area among all the other surfaces. Lots of different theories, lots of different formulas, lots of different mathematical proofs. But most of them are kind of hard to understand for everyone. So I think I'll try my best to, well, take a different approach towards proving this thing that sphere has the least surface area among all the other surfaces. Mm, not using much mathematical proofs. So here we go. Come with me. Well, the idea is here to use the projected area. What I'm trying to say is I will just project a 3D surface onto a 2D surface. Well, I'm gonna do that, right? It's sounding so crazy. Hmm. Don't worry, I'm not gonna use any holographic display. But what I'm gonna do, I'll just use a light bulb here. So, that's my bulb. Okay, whatever. Doesn't look like a bulb, right? No, maybe it is. Kinda. Whatever. So here's our light source. Now we need a surface here. That's our surface. That's where we're gonna project that 3D object. And that's our 3D object. Suppose. Okay, so that's our 3D object. We're gonna project this 3D object onto this one, this 2D subject. All right. So what is happening here? The light is traveling this way, and it's getting blocked by this surface. Hence, casting a shadow here onto this surface. Now this shadow is actually 2D. So what we did here, we projected a 3D object onto a 2D object or surface. So that was the thing that we did here. Now the next part is I'm gonna rotate this thing, this object. Maybe this side, maybe that side, maybe this side. I don't know, randomly, any side. Okay, so whatever. So we're changing its rotation, we're gonna change the shape of this shadow. At an instance, maybe it will be like this, maybe it will be like this, maybe it will be like this, and so on. So by changing its rotation, we're changing its shadow also. Alright? So what we do here, we're gonna measure the surface area of these shapes. Okay, we're gonna measure each and every shape that we will get by each and every rotation. And then what we are going to do, we will find the average surface area of this one, not one actually, so many. So of these shapes, all right? So that's the thing we will do. Now before doing that thing, I need to make sure that light is focused. Otherwise I'll get a blurry shadow. I don't want that, I want it to be, well, detailed all right so that's the thing we have to do and we have to do one thing more we need to place this light at a distance so that the size of the shadow equals the size of that object now this is important because we are going to compare this one and that one so yes we need to make sure that the size of the shadow and the size of this object are the same so that's the setup we are going to do all right now, maybe, just maybe, I'm gonna use just one mathematical formula here to make you understand all of these things. Now, the formula was given by Cauchy, C A U C H Y, I think. So, it was given by Cauchy. So, he said the average area of this shadow is one fourth of. The surface area of the real object. Alright? 
so according to him average surface area of the shadow all right of this shadow equals to one fourth of surface area of the object so that's the formula average surface area of the shadow which is this one not this one actually the average of bees is equals to one fourth of surface area of the object which is this right. so that's the formula we're gonna use here now let me show you my setup here that's the light so the light is coming from there that's the surface and well that light that's actually not the thing we're gonna talk about I just added that thing because it looks cool it's really looking nice isn't it and well for that we're gonna have a yellowish shadow you see the shadow is yellow so that's why I added that whatever so that's the object you can see that is 3d whatever and it's casting a shadow here yeah, you can see that so if I'm gonna rotate this one this object it will change its shapes you see lots of shapes lots of different different shapes so all these shapes we're gonna have all these shapes we're gonna make the average surface area of these shadows and then we're gonna multiply it with four to get the surface area of this object all right now suppose we have a cube all right now maybe the light is here it's oriented in that way that at a given instant we're gonna get a shadow like this one okay so that's the shadow of this cube all right and at a given instance we're gonna get a shadow like this also which is the cube that's the side of the cube you know this one that's a square we're gonna get a square here so obviously this one is smaller than this one so what we will get the average surface area would be larger than this one right larger than the smallest one so that will be the average area of this this cube which will be greater than this one part all right now let's talk about um, a sphere suppose that's a sphere we're gonna have light will be here and it's casting a shadow like this okay so however it's gonna rotate however whichever way it's gonna take it really doesn't matter because at every instance we're gonna get a shadow like this why because it's symmetric in every way so there will be no change in this one so we're not getting anything else like this variations of shapes we're getting just one shape so the average will be this shape right the surface area of this shape well to know the surface area of this shape we need to know the surface area of a circle which is pi r square suppose this is our radius of this circle so that's the surface area of this circle okay so at every instances it will be this one all right so the average will be also this one as there is no change here so that's the average surface area of the shadow or of the projected surface now what the formula says here average surface area of the shadow which is 
pi r squared. So let's write it down. Pi r squared is equals to one fourth of surface area of the object. So we need to know the surface area of this object. So it will be one fourth of surface area of the object. So we need to know this one, then well it equals to four pi r squared. So that's our answer. Now why I did that right? You see here we are getting larger shapes than just this one for any shape and every shape except sphere there will be shapes larger than something okay but here we are finding only one shape so it has to be smaller always what is the smallest one we're gonna find from here that's the smallest thing we're gonna find we cannot find anything else smaller than this one so the surface area of this shape will be the smallest right but we are getting also bigger shapes like these maybe like this and so many shapes all right but the smallest one is this for this one so the average is becoming larger than the smallest one like you have one and two the smallest one is one the largest one is two the average of these two numbers is one plus two divided by two equals to 1.5 which is larger than the smallest one here is also the same thing happening the average area of this cube well average surface area will be larger than the smallest one so we cannot get a smallest surface area we cannot get any small surface area surface area from this one right because we are getting larger shapes also so the average one is also getting larger than this one but here at every instances it's giving the same shape so that's the smallest one and that's the largest one also there is no change so the average will be only this one so that's why it has the smallest surface area among every other shapes all right well let's look at the cube now at this instance what are you watching here see it's not matching up with the square shape so the surface area of this shape is larger than the square so as i said before now let's look at this capsule same here you see it's increasing and also increasing, changing its shape. Now look at the cone. Same story here. Now look at this cylinder. Same story. Then look at this disc. Well, it's the same. Look at this plane. Now look at this platonic. It's cool, isn't it? Now look at this pyramid. Look at this torus. And now, finally, look at this sphere. Can you find any change in this shadow? Anything? Like it's not moving at all. So, you see, that's why it has the smallest surface area. As I told you before, if you're gonna see all these shapes, well, the shadow of all these shapes, the shadows are changing. 
and shadow is dependent on the rotation of that object but here for the sphere it's not dependent so that's why while the other shapes are having larger shapes larger shadow area causing the surface area to become larger this sphere is not having anything else like that so that's why it's having the smallest surface area <laughs> 